We're going to get started on an 820-3115 over here that is not giving me a green light on the charger. So let's plug in the charger and show you what I get. I get nothing. So I'm going to use my multimeter and we're going to go over some of the most basic things that we measure when we have no green light. So as you all know by now, in order for this to work, the charger over here, this adapter sense line, needs to talk to the SMC on the SIS1 wire line, but it has to go through U6900 first. Just in case adapter sense is 16 volts because our, D our charger is broken, we don't want to send 16 volts to the SMC. U6900 is, um, U6900 is the white knight of the SMC. U6900 is going to make sure with its sword and its horse that if adapter sense is 16 volts, how dare you talk to my SMC? Whereas if it's only 2.9 or 3 volts, it'll allow the SMC, which you can see here, that's even 4900, SMC, it says right over here, SMC, it will allow the SMC to talk to the charger on that line. In order for this chip to turn on, it needs to have 3.42 volts at pin 1, and it's VCC pin. Anytime you see VCC, that usually means that uh, that's the pin where the chip is going to get its power to turn on. Now, in order for it to get that, this logic gate over here needs to shoot that voltage out to the VCC pin. This logic gate needs to have 3.42 volts present at pin 5, which is its power pin, to turn it on. If you look up the data sheet for this chip, you'll notice that the way this works, if A and B are present, you get Y. If A and B are present, then you get Y. So I need SMC, B, C, A, C, OK to be present and PP3, V4, 2 to be present in order to get the output over there, which I probably don't have right now. PP3, V4, 2, here I'm going to pretend I don't know where it is just to show you how I find stuff. And that's going to be over here. And we've got our multimeter here in serial mode. So PP3V42 is 3.42 volts. Ain't that beautiful. Now we have to see what's going on in the U6901 area over here. So let's find U6901. U6901 is going to be up here. And ew. Oh, ew. Ew. What the... <clears throat> what the fuckery fuck is this? This is some bullshit. This is not what I came for. This is gross. What the fuckity fuck? Boo. 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 Pre-worked on board. Boo. <laughs> All right. So let's, let's get serious here. Let's get serious here, shall we? All right. So. Uh, we're going to see what we get on pin 5. So is PP3 before 2 making it to the chip? Pin 1. SMC, BCAC, OK. SMC, BCAC, OK is present on pin 1 of my chip. Now let's see what's coming out of it on pin Y. If the chip is working on pin on Y, which is 4, which is this, I should get 3.4. And I get 3.49. All right. What do, you, what do we got to do now? We got to follow it along. Let's follow it along to U6900. U6900 is going to be on the bottom of the board. Now, U6900, let's see if the voltage from here is making its way to here. So we click on pin 4. Isn't it still, isn't it still a little too disgusting for ultrasonic? Eh, we'll see. And that's supposed to show up in pin 1 of U6900. And U6900 is going to be here. So let's measure what we get on pin 1 of U6900. And it looks like on pin 1 of U6900, I get 0 0.008 volts. Now, that's interesting. So this over here, I'm getting 3.42 volts, like I'm supposed to. And over here, I'm getting 0. But these two are supposed to be directly connected. So let me just go up to the other side of the board and just confirm that I'm not losing my mind. And let's confirm that on the other side, I am getting my 3.42 volts on pin 4 of U6901, as I would expect. And I am getting my 3.4. So at this point, I would guess that my issue is that my link between U6901 and U6900 is broken. So between U6901 over here, this connection, the path between this and this, is burned out on the board, which means that we're going to run a little wire from there to there. And 
I'm guessing this is a. It looks like somebody did a lot of rework to this already, and they just weren't able to figure out the last part. So let's figure out the last part for them. And we're going to redo this. And it's interesting because there's a lot of ugly points on this board. There, but this is, this one is not. So the part that's broken here is this. So as you can see, this is where this this is the pin that's broken. That's not going to the other side, right? And there's a lot of nasty stuff here. But the irony is that this is not. This is not really the nasty part. So I'm going to see if I just resolder this a little bit, if if this fixes our problem. Because I may not have to run a jumper. I really find it hard to believe. Just going to scrape away at that trace there a little bit. And let's see if that fixes it. But I, I, I feel like we may have to run a wire. Yeah, no dice. Okay, so there's no way around the, the, the good old real work of running a wire. My hands are killing me today. What the hell are you doing, dumbass? All right, that is that is close. This. Now we're going to send that wire to the other side of the board. We got to route this creatively. Okay. So where are we going to send this? How how are we going to send this wire? So let's run my wire. Okay, I probably should avoid the backlight section, but running it through the 50 volt backlight section is probably not the smartest idea. But I like the idea of the wire having some security on the board. All right, so. Beautiful. Let's get that lower on the board. Don't want you. I don't want any of the exposed wire to be available sticking out. This has got to be nice and tight on the board. So I'm going to route this whichever way around doesn't give it any slack. Not giving these wires any slack. Okay, now we plug it in and see if it explodes. Woo -hoo. Look at what I got. I has a green light, baby. Ooh, look at that green light. Ain't that nice. Ain't that nice. That's my green light. Oh, boy. So that is it for that one. And as always, I hope you learned something. And now time for an advertisement. 
this is our website here, mailin.repair, you will be able to find uh, most of the different cleaners, stencils, connectors, ICs, and uh, small chips that we use throughout these repairs on this website. So here you'll find the ultrasonic cleaner that we use at the store that's fixed many of the boards that I was unable to fix in the video. This here is shipped straight from the store. Here you'll see a bunch of LCD connectors. Uh, we've got keyboard connectors. We've got digitizer connectors, and they're all organized here. So if you go connectors by type, or or you can search by your device. So if we go here, components by device, iPhone, iPhone 6S, it'll bring you to a screen where you'll find a bunch of different parts for your iPhone. The same is true for stencils. We've got stencils over here, like the SMC stencil, that it's typically hard to buy directly in America. You'll have to wait a long time to get that from China. Here we've got the uh, some different parts like the um, PP3V42 regulator over here. So this is a PP3V42 regulator. You can actually search by the number on the schematic. And if there are different chips with that same number, it'll bring up all the different chips. You can scroll down and figure out which one is for your motherboard. Because over here, it'll say compatible boards, and it'll list all the boards the chip is compatible with. If you don't want to deal with that, you can even just search by your motherboard. So if I search over here for 820-3462, it will only show me chips that are compatible with my model motherboard. And this was all put together with high resolution pictures so that you can compare it to your chip to make sure that you buy the right one. And if you ever have a question, feel free to email, feel free to comment, feel free to live chat. So thank you very much for watching the video. Thank you very much for your patronage if you use our website. We've also got Flux here if you want Flux. We've got uh, solder paste over here if you want solder paste.